Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today we're going to do a fun little coaster in polymer clay and we're going to do this cane which we're going to make into a tile effect onto the coaster. Now obviously we're doing it as coasters and we're going to make tiles but you can just use this as an ordinary cane and make all sorts of wonderful things with it by kaleidoscoping it. It's done as a coaster as a result of a comment that Cindy Lee 29 posted underneath my Victorian tile tutorial talking about doing the tiles on coasters. So I'll take you through the whole process from beginning to end on how to make a coaster. And this is the one we're going to do, but I'll show you these two at the end with the different colour variations. So let's get started and see what equipment we need for today's project. So the equipment we need for today's session is very straightforward. A polymer clay blade. I sometimes refer to this as a tissue blade because that's what it's sometimes known as in the UK. A craft knife. Some form of roller, polymer clay roller, small one, perfectly fine. I'm going to use some liquid clay. I've just decanted some into a bottle here, just make it easier for me to use. I've just cut myself out a sheet of paper. This one's four inches or 10 centimeters square because that's going to be the size of the coaster and that's just handy to do. So do whatever size you want your coaster to be. We need a couple of tiles to bake on, preferably both the same size. We are going to be using a measuring sheet and this one is a one inch one. It's the four squares to one inch and it's freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net. If to finish your piece off you'd like to sand and polish, then you also need some wet dry sandpaper. I use 240 grit, 600, 1000, 1500 and 2000. And you want something to protect your hands, so something like rubber gloves if you're able to wear them. And then to finish off to go in between the gaps in our tiles, and again, you don't have to do this, but if you do want to, then ordinary um, tile grout works absolutely fine and looks really good. Um, so I've just decanted a small amount and you need tiny, tiny amounts. There's just a little bit in here that will last me for loads and loads of time. And we're just going to mix it with water. So just something to mix it in, something to hold the water in and a little sort of spatula thing just to smooth it into the tiles. If you didn't want to use grout, you could just backfill once your coaster has baked with ordinary polymer clay. And I will put a link to how I did this in the Victorian tile tutorial, so you can follow that link to see that if you want to do it that way instead. So other than that, so there's not very much we need in the way of equipment, you will of course need a pasta machine dedicated to the use of polymer clay. And I will be using wet wipes to clean my hands and clean my tiles and work surfaces as I go along. And I will also working on a nice tile surface to make the cane. So that's it, so let's move on to the clay we need for today's session. Today I'm using Fimo Soft, but all known brands of polymer clay will be perfect for doing this technique with. We're going to use scrap clay to make the base of our coaster today. It's about 42 grams, one and a half ounces of clay, and I'm just going to marble this together and then use my template um, to cut out the bottom of our coaster. For the main parts of clay, we actually need a whole pack. So that's two ounces or 56 grams of a light color or white. That's going to be your background color. So obviously choose whatever you want, but one whole pack of that. I've got a half pack. So one ounce or 28 grams of a dark color. I'm using black today. And then we've got small amounts of four colors. So these are just seven grams or quarter ounce. And I've gone for the raspberry, the peppermint, the lilac, and the plum, which to me is more of a purple colour, but they call it plum. Um, sometimes it shows up a bit strange on the YouTube videos, but it's, it's a nice deep purpley colour. So the first thing to do is to condition all of your clay. I'm going to put it all through setting three on my pasta machine, which is a medium setting. On my machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. And I'm just going to put it into sheets. If you're unsure how to condition polymer clay, I do have a video to give you some hints and tips on doing this, and I'll put a link below the video details. Right, let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is to make myself a base for my coaster. So I'm going to take my scrap clay 
just marble it, they cut it in slices, put it through the pasta machine, and I'm going to put it through quite a thickish setting, so setting number two on my machine. So all I'm going to do is just chop it into slices and put it through the pasta machine. So when I've got it back, and if I've sort of got it to a marbled stage that I quite like the pattern, I can take one of my tiles, put it down and make sure it's nice and firmly on that with no air stuck underneath. Give it a roll if necessary. I want it as flat as I can make it. And then I'm going to take my template and simply use that and my blade to cut around the outside. Once it's done, I will doubly make sure there's no air trapped inside and it's nicely adhered down. And then I will get my second tile and place it shiny side down on top of that one. And that'll keep that piece nice and flat in the oven. And then simply bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And whilst that's baking, we'll get on with making the cane. So to make the pattern in our cane, I'm going to do two Skinner blends. I'm going to do the peppermint white in between into the plum and the raspberry with white in between into the lilac. So I'll just do this one to start with. Anyone who doesn't know how to do a Skinner blend, I do have a video showing you some tips and techniques for doing that. So go and have a look at that one. And all we're going to do is just do a simple three-way colour split where I've chopped those two down diagonally, this one down the centre. That piece goes round like that. That piece goes round like that. These two pieces go on top. And I'm not overly worried about the fact that those don't quite fit. I can pull or stretch them ever so slightly. But effectively, they're going to go together like that. I'm going to turn bottom to top, bottom to top, each time putting through fold first and collecting and then folding it until I get a nice blend. So I'll do a blend of this colour and then a blend of the other one as well. And I'll bring you back when I've done both of those. So there are the two blends done. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold each one in half and one at a time. I'm going to put them first back down through the same setting of the pasta machine I've done these on, which is actually setting number two, to give myself a longer, thinner piece. And then I'm going to put them back down through my thinnest usable setting to get myself a really nice, long, thin piece, which I am then going to concertina. So I will speed up the process for both of those and bring you back when I've got them both concertinaed. You'll see I'm going to do it probably about just over half an inch, probably about one and a half centimetres in width when I do the concertina. So I'll speed up the next bit and you'll see how it goes. So first of all, put this one through on the same setting, number two. So there we go, two plugs of clay where you've got one colour at one end and going through to the other at the other end. So what I'm going to do now is I need to change the shape of these because I want to do a outline in white all the way around each one. But in order to make sure that the outline is consistent, I need to change the shape before I put the outline around. So the first one I'm going to do is this one. And I want to change the shape of this into more of a teardrop shape. So I'm just going to push in at the sides so creating that sort of shape with my fingers until I've got it back almost to a square shape but changed the orientation and I'm going to make it slightly shorter and I'm going to have a play around with it until I get it into a nice pear shape and what I'm looking at is I'm trying to make sure it's the same width all the way down so that what's here is what's there. So at the moment that's smaller, so I need to have a mess around until I've got it the same shape. And I'm going to have it coming to a point at the deep purple end and going to more of a round where the blue is. When I've got it pretty even, I'll put it to one side. Now this one's going to be slightly strange. I'm going to do the lilac into a point and the 
pink is going to become rounded. So to start with, a bit like this one, however, I'm then going to pinch in really tight all the way down to make an odd sort of shape. Where I've got a rounded top, don't worry that this looks messy on this end, it'll all be fine when it's come out. So, an odd sort of shape, but one that looks quite fun when we kaleidoscope it. So all I've done really is just with my fingers pushed in to give me rounds either side. If you'd rather, of course you could use your roller to go in. And what we're looking at is if possible to get these the same height. So this one is now taller than this one, so I'm just going to push him slightly shorter. And now we have our two shapes, we can get our white and our dark to go around the outside. So we're going to start with um, a layer of dark to separate the two colours. So what I'm going to do, this is on setting three still on the pasta machine, it was the black that I conditioned at the same time as I conditioned all the other clay, but I want a nice thin layer. So I've cut that so it's the right width, but I'm now going to put it through the pasta machine that way on quite a thin setting, so setting number six on my machine. So I just want a very thin layer to wrap around the outside of this. Just take a bit of the excess off, neaten off the end, and then just put one layer of this all the way round. And if you've got enough, and I might just have, of course in theory this should be the same height. So I'm going to push it round, but I'm going to make sure it sits nicely into that round area we'd pushed out roll it into one on that side. If you roll it too much, just patch it and get it down to the bottom. Okay, so there's our two parts of our cane nicely wrapped in the black. Now I'm going to clean my hands because the black does come off quite a lot with um, the female. And when I conditioned my white clay earlier, again I had put it through on setting number three, and that's exactly the right thickness for what we want. So I'm just going to take my blade, use it down the side to give me the right thickness, and then the same as we just did with the black, go all the way around the outside with the white. with another piece of the white I had. If it's not quite the right size and that isn't going to fit, then I will fold it to a height that is going to fit around the outside of this and put this back through the pasta machine on that same setting number three. And that should hopefully just about be enough to go through. I always start at the bottom end, the end that's going to be the point of our cane, so that there's no joins around the main part of the pattern. As before, go in, press into the rounds, press in there again, and we should just about make it to the end. If you've got a bit where it's not quite fitting, you can of course always just go back and patch a tiny bit. And then just as we did before, With our black clay, we're going to do another thin layer all the way around, so exactly the same again. Same thickness as before, so sitting number six, go through that way, because I've got it the right um, width for the piece I'm using. Start off down the bottom. Put it neatly all the way around. And we probably won't have enough to go all the way around that one, but we might just have enough with this piece of, again, setting number six.
So those are our two elements for our cane and now it's just a case of how we put them together. So the first thing we're going to do is this nice petal shape we are going to cut straight down the middle of this one. So you want it as even as you can so pay attention to where it's going through down here. If necessary rock it backwards and forwards, look both sides as you're going. You want it as even as you can possibly get. When you've got it like that those two pieces are going to sit that side of your main piece. In fact we're going to move them just fractionally up like that. Now as you can see here we've more or less formed a right angle but we want to form an even better right angle so what I'm going to do I'm going to turn it on its side and then this bit with my fingers I'm actually going to push up. You see there I've pulled up then I'm going to reverse do that one and pull this side up and what that does it creates less of a gap in here brings these up to being a nice height and what we're looking for is that they are roughly the same height either side so you can always check that by putting it onto your measuring sheet seeing where your corner is and seeing right this one actually is going right up to the two inches so this one wants to be slightly further up so I'm just pulling it out as I'm going till that one is also up around the two inch point. So all we're going to do now is we are going to take all of our leftover bits of white, push them into a ball Roll your leftover bits into a nice even sausage shape, chop them neatly in two and we are going to force a triangular piece, triangular shape into the gaps in here. So with your round all I'm going to do is with my fingers I'm just pressing down on the top to create a triangular shape. Now this is quite a long narrow triangle so I can either pull one bit really up quite tight so that it fits in nicely cut off the excess and repeat on the other side or if you weren't happy doing that you could have done a small triangle and then added a big one on the outside but I'm going to try and repeat the same sort of shape on this one so quite a thin sort of triangle shape going in if you can try and make sure it's the same at either end And I think that's probably all we need to do. Have, have a look and see whether it's how square it is. It's not particularly square at the moment. I have to say this side is quite a lot narrower than that side or it seems to be. But I will just force that into a proper square as we go I think. I've noticed that I've, I'm fairly even down here so that's pretty good. So we'll just leave that as it is. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the bases that that's one point that's a point, that's a point, and this is a point. And I am going to force that into a square. And the more you go down the more square your shape will become and just keep reducing that down so all I'm doing is I'm moving my fingers down the length turning it moving turning it I'm always looking at these lines trying to make sure I can keep these as even and as straight as possible don't worry about the fact that the white gets mucky we can clear that up afterwards but what I'm aiming to get 
is a nice square shape. So where this one is right on a corner, I want to make sure it stays on a corner. Same with this one here. So I will carry on reducing. Occasionally I will turn it over the other way to make sure that I'm getting even pressure as I go down. If you do have any of the cane caps, the cane savers, then use those, they will work perfectly. And just make sure you've got yourself a nice even slice off the top before you put them on. And I'll put the links to those in the details of the video below. So I will carry on reducing this. Once I've got it to about four inches in length, I'm going to change the shape of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this piece as a nice right angle, but this piece I'm going to make into a flat, so I'm going to create a triangular shape. Now I'm going to do this by very gently to start with, just rolling along the bottom. Just a slightly even off the side. Once I've got it rolled, I can now turn it on its side and leaving it nicely supported, just press along with my thumb, just creating more of a flat edge. Turn it over, do the same along this side. And what I'm trying to create is a nice triangle where I've still got the right angle on this side. So again, just press gently down. Take your time. Don't rush this. So by this stage, you've probably gone well over four inches. So I've got one, two, three, four, five and a half effectively. So I now want to cut off four even pieces. So the easiest way to do it really one, two, three, four, five, six. So to actually chop straight down the middle. I'm then going to sort of give you a seed start as to what the pattern is we're going to get, although it's going to go together that way. I am then going to chop because we will have distortion on either end. So I am going to give myself one inch and one square. So therefore I need to see if that's going to work, whether or not that will also be distorted. So the way to look is to put it next to another piece and actually that's not too bad so I can risk doing both pieces on that size side and let's see if we can do the same on this side so we've got one and a square one and a square so that would be about there and again yes that's fine so now I know I can cut one inch and one square and I can cut one inch and one square and that will then give us our cane. So what I've done is I've made sure I've matched together those two parts nicely and then we will do the same with this one. So it's easier to match the two halves together first making sure you're matching both the top and the bottom. If like this one, there's a bit where it's distorted, just pull that until it starts to meet. And then press your triangle flat, because then you know when you put your two flat sides together, they should marry up nicely. And that's going to be our cane. So put those two bits together and what you then have is a nice square cane. And all I'm going to do now is reduce this square cane down until it is just about one inch in width across each of these sides. Once I've reduced it until it's fractionally under an inch in width, then I will stop. I will use my roller to go over the edges 
to make sure they're nice and flat and get rid of any fingerprint marks. I will have a look at the corners, make sure the corners are nice and sharp. Make sure my lines are pretty pristine going down the corners. And then re-roll. And what I'm looking to get is as square a cane as I possibly can. Now, do you remember I said about the, the black and the white? What we could really do at this stage is leaving this cane to rest. So to give you an incentive to leave it to rest, take a wet wipe and take all the black off your white lines. This means that when we kaleidoscope it, you won't get that awful black line where you can see where the white joins. However, as you can see here, this will have made your clay very wet and very sticky. So, to remove the residue there, you definitely need to leave this now to dry off and to rest before we start cutting the slices. So we'll wait until the coaster base is finished and cooled from the oven. By the time that's cooled, this should be ready to go. So when your bottom piece has come out of the oven and it's all nicely cooled, Take some liquid polymer clay, not too much, but just a bit, and smear it all over the side you're going to add your patterned squares onto. You don't need a lot, you want enough to sort of make it tacky rather than slippy, because you don't want the squares to go sliding all over the place, but you want enough that they'll stick to it and you can give them a slight manoeuvre. So your cane, if you had at this stage given it a wipe with a wet wipe should hopefully by now be nice and dry and what you need to do is you need to take slices now I'm going to work out that I know I've got distortion all the way up to there so I'm going to chop off up to there and then I'm going to take 16 slices now I could cut turn it on its side cut turn it on side cut turn it side because every time you slice down you're going to reduce the um, height of this cane however I'm going to manipulate the slices once I've cut them so therefore I'm not going to do that I'm going to make sure they're all facing the same way up all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some slices you can go as thin as you can do reasonably but you want to make sure that you're cutting at a thickness where you can do all 16 slices the same and I'll bring you back when I've finished them all. Once you've got your slices done, you can start pulling them apart and one by one I'm going to set them onto a square of my sheet. So this is, this piece I've got is four of those squares wide. Now I want to put these on as tiles, so I want these to be just fractionally smaller than an inch. So at the moment, that's not too bad this size, but it's a little bit too short because it has shrunk down as I've taken the slices. So with my roller, I'm just going to very gently make that slightly taller and then with the blade I'm going to press around the outside to neaten off all these edges and to make it fractionally smaller than the one inch size so that when I put all these pieces together we'll be able to put them together and have little gaps in between and then I'm going to take my piece and this first one is going to sit right on the top edge. And once it's on, again, I can with my blade just neaten up the edge. Then I'm going to repeat that with every single slice. And the next thing I need to do is to look for the tell because I want to make sure that when I place them together they're going to be exactly making a kaleidoscope pattern. Now that doesn't match. However, that side round will match. So what I'm going to do, every time I put a piece of um, clay on there, before I actually get it to the right size, I'm going to make sure it's orientated the right way around. It's the same as before, slight roll. Use the tissue blade. 
and now I know I can put that on my piece. Make sure it's nice and even. Same with the next piece. That way up. Or that way up. So that's the way it's going to go. So then I'm going to put that on. And repeat doing that all the way until you've got to the end and you've fitted all 16 tiles on. So I've finally, and it takes a while at times to um, figure out, finally found my tell that I can tell which way um, the cane is going to be oriented, orientated. This one here, where the purple goes into the white into the blue, is the only one of those four where it's pretty perfect. So I now know that that's the piece I need to look at to see which way my cane is orientated. So on this piece, it's like that as well. So I now know if I lay that one like that, it's going to have to flip that way around and that's how it will match on the next piece down. So I now know that's the right way up. So I can start doing my next row. And that's the piece I will use all the way through to flip to make sure I've got things the right way around. Right, so there are pieces put on to the tile, but I've actually got a little bit of tile excess here. It's a bit of a gap here. So what I'm now going to do is very, very gently, making sure I've got a very clean roller, just go over the whole tiles. I'm just gonna pull them slightly wider. So I'm not actually trying to close up the gaps, but I'm trying to, completely, but I am trying to close them enough so that you can't so you don't have too much of a gap in between. Now obviously if I didn't want the gaps, if I didn't want to make it look like a tile, I could just close the whole thing up and create a beautiful pattern just along the top. But we'll keep the tile idea going. So what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that they're pretty smooth and then along each side using the side of the um, blade. I'm just going to check and if it's not quite up to the edge I'm going to roll because I can always push it back. It's much easier to push back in but of course you can't push back an area where it hasn't quite gone over the corner. And then when I'm happy and it's nice and flat and even using the blunt side of the blade and keeping my fingers well away from the sharp bit you can just go back in, go along the line and create a little groove. Now this is hardly any amount of groove but it's going to be enough to create the illusion that they are all tiles. So you do one way, then go back, do the other way. And 
there you have your piece ready for its second baking. So I'm going to bake it exactly the same as before, flat on the tile, with the other tile face down, and again bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And when it's baked I'll bring you back and we'll finish off our coaster. Once you're ready to grout, you want to put a tiny amount of water in. So you don't need very much at all, you just want to make a smooth paste. I need it to be a little bit thicker than that, so I'm going to add a tiny bit more of the powder. So about like that, something that's just slightly more runny than you would normally grout your tiles with so that it fits into the small areas between our patterned clay. Then making sure you've got at least one a couple of um, wet wipes or wet cloths to hand. Take your piece and just smear the grout into those grooves. Once it's all in, just pull off all the excess. Now, I had sanded and polished this, so because of that it pulls off, as you can see, really, really easily. So I'll just take an excess cloth just to make sure I've got no bits left on, go around the edges. So it's just added tiny, tiny bits of grout just in between all the our squares there. And once that is dry, and I'll just leave it to dry naturally, our piece is ready to go. So there we are, there's our piece finished. And I've sanded and polished it so it's a nice shine on it. And it's got a little bit of grouting in between just to give the effect of tiles on a coaster. So it was a fun one to do, but just to show you some other alternates. I've done similar, and this time I've used the apple green and lemon yellow the peppermint and calypso blue, and again with the white and the black, giving that effect. And in this one, I've used the raspberry and the plum, the apple green and the emerald green, and again, give you that effect. And just final, exactly the same colour choices as this one, um, but done in a slightly different way. So I did the lilac to the plum, and the peppermint to the raspberry. But as you can see, you can get really quite different looks all from the same pattern and the reason you get different looks is the amount of white you put in between so this is the one that we did during the thing and you can see the whites just in between those two pieces now if you add a fraction more white so you can see there's a little more white in this one then you get this sort of look if you add more white again, so you can see here I've actually done the white right round and over the top. So in the triangular piece, when it was like this, I added more white on both of these sides. So rather than just being on here, I did quite a lot, but still just left a little being. So you can see here, you've got the black on the edges there. So with the extra white, so you can see here there's more white in the outside bits here. So this gives you that look. And then on this particular one, I actually put white all the way around the outside. So can you see there's virtually no black lines at all, just they're hidden inside by a layer of the white. And that gives a much more open look like this one. And you can tell when you look by going down the sides, seeing how much black or white you have on the sides of them. So that was it as usual, experiment, have fun, enjoy and come up with your own designs. I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to all of those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I think that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.